Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Thanks for attending this talk about learning randomized algorithms with transformers. This is work with amazing friends and scientists, Sejin, Johannes, and Angelica, my professor. Thanks, all of them. So a little bit about the motivation of this work. So randomization is a simple tool to prevent predictability. And in unpredictability in nature implies high, higher survival chances. So you can see this with like cockroaches. If you look at them, they have this very erratic way of moving, which makes it in practice very hard for us to catch them or for a bird. And so it seems like evolution gave cockroaches this random circuitry in the brain that allows them to move in that way. And it seems also that nature seem, does this very frequently. If now we look at randomness in the computer science field, it's also not a new idea. I want to like showcase it by this very known uh, randomized algorithms, which whose uh, goal is to de determine whether a number is prime or not. So if you're a clever mathematician without the knowledge that we have one in mathematics, and I ask you to come up with some deterministic algorithm to determine whether a number is prime, you would think a lot, and then you would probably come up with something which is at least linear in n. And so. What uh, Rabba Miller showed in the late 70s is that if you allow yourself now to have not a probability one of success, but a slighter, slightly lower probability of success, you can suddenly very easily make your algorithm logarithmic, so exponential speed up. So of course now uh, you don't have a perfect probability of success, but you can also very easily just rerun the algorithm with multiple states and exponentially fast decay your probability of success. So. Uh, um, what we see is that randomized algorithms have very nice, remarkable properties. And what we want to do is to use them with transformers and to bring their strength, their beauty, to the world of deep learning. Um, a little bit more about the setting. So we consider an algorithm, which in our case is just like a parameterized mode. So A theta, it takes x, the input, as the input, but it also gets some uh, random seed. And so we fix a distribution over the input, a distribution over the seeds, which are represented by random variables x and r. Now uh, I can have my randomized model, which maps x to a theta of x r, where r is a random variable. So the output itself is a random variable given the input. And I also fix some loss, which is pos which I assume to be positive. And so just to give a little bit uh, of intuition of anchor, just think of the following problem. This is like the um, associative recall problem, which is a very which is which represent this uh, uh, needle in a haystack problem that we know LLMs have a lot of trouble with. So what what the problem is about is I give you a lot of association between keys and values, so n of them, and then after n of them I ask you what was the value associated with this key, and you have to tell me which one it is. So let's be naive. Let's just give some seed um, and train the algorithm using classical empirical risk minimization and see what happens. And sadly. If you do this in a naive way, what you observe is that nothing happens. You know, the randomness is completely ignored by the model, and uh, you end up training a normal model. So why is that? The first uh, intuition we want to give you is the following. So like this is just like a reinterpretation of Yao Minmax principle in our setting. It's very, very easy to prove, but still very fundamental intuition in computer science. What does it tell you? If you have a loss, and you care about the expected loss over your input, then obviously there is at least one seed that is going to perform in, ex uh, in expectation over the input at least as well as the expectation over the seeds. Right? This is kind of very intuitive. So what this implies, that's the first inequality, is that give me whatever randomized algorithm, there exists a deterministic algorithm which uh, performs in expectation over the input at least as well as your randomized algorithm. So the randomization meaning like finding this seed might be complex, but uh, this is an a priori result. And so I've been like teasing you a little bit with randomization is amazing in computer science. We want to bring it, and it seems that mathematically there is nothing to extract from it, right? But this is uh, only if you care about empirical risk minimization. What happens now if you diverge, dive away from this setting? And so we consider like. Uh, like an adversarial setting. So you have an adversary, an oblivious adversary. An oblivious adversary knows your circuitry. It knows exactly how you function. Uh, it can uh, not control your randomness, but it can control your input. It can really choose the input in a very adversarial way, like the one that you, you're the worst of. And so this is obviously philosophically and mathematically very related to the min-max loss. What's the min-max loss? Instead of caring about the expectation over my input, 
I just care about the worst, uh, worst case input, right? And so if I care about these two things, we are able actually to prove the opposite. Randomization is going to be beneficial. What does it mean? So don't read the proposition, but what we sh showcase is that in a lot of scenarios that happen, uh, very, that are very intuitive scenarios that happen in AI, we can prove that randomization is going to be beneficial compared to just having a deterministic algorithm when you care about the, this adversarial loss. And so what's the intuition? Imagine like you have a shield. It has a lot of holes in it. Uh, and you have an, uh, an adversary that can like, basically shoot very precisely around. Uh, you better not stand with your shield uh, sending like, in a deterministic way like this, because what happens then is just like the adversary knows exactly what input to choose or what arrow to shoot to kill you. You'd rather be trying to cover in a randomized way all the inputs. And so this is kind of the intuition where, uh, behind the situ lot of situations where randomized algorithms are going to be perform better. Um, so we care about this adversarial loss, but in practice, we don't work with that loss. We work with the following loss. Now, if you stare for a second at this loss, what happens for Q is equal to 1 is kind of you're back to uh, empirical risk minimization. So all the inputs are treated exactly. And so this is kind of an LQ norm. So now if Q tends to infinity, you get a kind of infinity norm. So you're just selecting um, the, 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 the input, which is the worst case input. So if your Q is in the middle, now you think about taking the gradient of that loss. What you do in practice is you're going to basically take a big signal from the worst case input into your training, but you're still going to include a little bit of signal from the rest of input, right? If we would have used the, the other loss, we would just be taking the, the signal fully from the worst case input, so the training would be slow. So back to the experimental results. I spoke about the associative recall. and so. What happens if I train a deterministic model? So I have no randomness. What you see, so this is like a histogram of the success probability for all my input. You see that 20% of my input, so we are underparameterized, and uh, the linear tr we use a linear transformer, so the memory uh, uh, that it has is limited. So what you, you see when you train a deterministic algorithm is that you can f fit very well 20% of the data, and you just ignore 80% of the remaining data. Um, what do we get now if we allow to train a randomized algorithm? What does it mean in practice? We give additional seed as part of the token, and we don't train with empirical risk minimization, but with this adversarial loss. And then what happens is the following. You get that the following histogram. Instead of perfectly fitting some of the data and ignoring the rest, you, you're kind of spreading up your performance across all, or your, all of your inputs. And you end up giving a non-zero non advantage to each of your inputs. So uh, yeah, like we, we went from having very well, uh, uh, very good, uh, like, so just like to recontextualize, like if you think now about uh, what a deterministic strategy would be, I have limit, limited memory. I probably gather in my mem memory as much information as I can. So I remember the first K associations and the rest I forget. That's what a deterministic uh, uh, strategy looks like. So if you do it, you have an adversary. Obviously, it's very easy to attack. You just take the one association that you didn't learn. I ask you for this one. And then, yeah, what can you do? Now, using the randomized algorithms, we are allowing to have a non-zero success probability everywhere. But now, of course, like in, before, for the stuff that we learned, we were really learning it perfectly. And now we have just this 40% uh, success probability. So it's not great, right? But uh, if you remember what we said about Rabin Miller, basically, we, we have a theorem that is telling you, OK, like, don't read the math. What it's telling you, basically, is if you are in a situation where your al algorithm is, come, is able to come up with a mode so the, the most likely output is one which is a right output, then you can just sample logarithmic enough uh, steps, and you will amplify exponentially faster probability uh, arbitrarily close to one. So this is also what we do. So we go from this, and now if I allow myself to uh, sample from the model not once, but uh, uh, f uh, five times or 30 times, then I'm just like shifting all my distributions towards one. And then if it's 30, what I observe is using exactly the same number of parameters, same number of hidden units, what I'm ending up doing is actually perfectly fitting my data, which is really crazy when you think about it, right? And so you can also see it uh, in the following. So like 
we have a fixed sequ sequence length. If you, you do deterministic, you start from, uh, you start from if, if you have 10 associations, you can learn, and then it dramatically decays. And then now, if you are using randomized, it decays in a much smoother way. And if you're allowing yourself to do majority voting, then it's, uh, you can even learn much more information uh, than you can previously do. Uh, and so we consider other settings. I'm, I'm going to quickly go to the last setting, which is grid exploration. You are in a grid, and uh, you start from a certain position. You know your position, but you're blind. And I tell you, there is a, uh, a treasure somewhere. So if you're uh, deterministic, well, the best thing you can do is just like you go following a path, and now, um, and now, like, for me, as an adversary, I just look at your path. I look at the final position that you reach every time, and this is where I put the treasure. Uh, you, you, this is the worst case, basically. So, like, this is, uh, of course, like this. Is, this scenario is much more interesting because also it's an RL scenario, so you cannot train with classical gradient descent. And so now, bringing uh, a seed into the game, what happens is that the model instead of following exactly the same path, we'll just like uh, learn to walk in a very erratic way, just like this cockroach that I was showing at the beginning. And now, even if an adversary knows exactly what my uh, circuitry is doing, what can it do better, right? And so I really uh, ask you to uh, go uh, to the paper and look, there are much more amazing results. I cannot present everything given the limited uh, amount of time. But uh, just as, as a general point, uh, there are really a lot of follow-up work practical for our community related to this. So we're opening this new direction, but you can think of the problem of needle in a high stack for LLMs. You can think of the problem of keeping diversity over the output. You can uh, consider other types of adversaries a little bit more complex. You can ask the question of OOD generalization, LLM robustness, all of those techniques. We really believe that our technique can, can be very beneficial for them. So general messages we want to give you there are a lot of very low hanging fruits please uh, make this uh, work yours uh, well thanks for uh, uh, attending the presentation Thank you.